from the very locations that Israel, in a quest to help make peace, gave them that segment of the land, which is a significant uh, borders were surrendered in order to make peace, which becomes the next stronghold for firing on them. And when there's retaliation and a defensive stance, they're, they're made the aggressors by the press. Now that single example I use, just as one example, it is a way of life for the way Israel is cast. That breeds hatred among the nations, or at least a disposition of opposition. Is it, what other observations have you made? You know, it's interesting you said that because I just sit here thinking that uh, a number of years ago, in fact, when Israel went into Lebanon and they drove out yeah. the, the, the PLO, mm -hmm. uh, two weeks later, I went in with a group of people on a fact-finding tour, uh, met with Bashir Jamael, who was the president of Lebanon at the time, his father, Bashir uh, Pierre Jamael, and a number of others, uh, talked to both Israelis, Lebanese, uh, Christian Lebanese, and one of the interesting things was that we went into a town uh, called Demur. Two weeks before I went, I had seen a picture in Time Magazine, half-page picture, and it, sh it, it was talking about Israeli troops had gone through there and destroyed that town. Amazingly, two weeks later, I was in that town. We, we drove up through that town, and I noticed that all of the, the metal, the, the destruction, there was grass growing up, the metal was rusted, and so I, I pulled a Lebanese aside and I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm having a struggle here because I understand a few weeks ago there was a major battle here and uh, the Israelis destroyed this town. He said, oh, no, no, no. So this was a Christian town and 10 years ago, 10 or 15 years before that, uh, it, there had been, uh, they had all been driven out uh, by the PLO. And he said a number of them were killed. And he said, I said, but was there a battle here with the Israelis? He said, oh, yeah, it was over in that little area right there. And then they went on their way. Total disinformation. And there were other kinds of things like that that I saw there that when I got back, the things that I read were absolutely different from the things, radically different from the things I saw to the point it was almost scary until a few weeks later a reporter did a... <clears throat> full page, and he said, what you have been hearing about the war in Israel is not true, in Lebanon is not true. And he told the story that I saw. But before that, it was, you know, I don't want to call it outright lies, but it came from a perspective that was nothing like we saw, to the point, Jack, that it was scary. Mm -hmm. The quest on the part of uh oftentimes uh, freelance journalists and then they supply the network CNN to begin with internationally and and others uh, who pick up on the things that uh, they, they in fact yep. invite in and edit and choose to use so they're responsible for it is that uh, freelance journalists will will get footage that uh, they set up literally set up uh, in one of our at times you and I have both been to that part of the world many times and uh, my 39th trip to Israel is coming up this, uh, this uh, April, in fact. Uh, anybody want to go with us, check our website and come. The uh, experience uh, that we had was that that day, there had, we did not see it take place, but our guide had, uh, was aware of it. He lives in Jerusalem. And uh, there had been an arrangement made for a group of Palestinian boys to come, teenage boys, and they had them throwing rocks and uh, they started a tiny little bonfire in the middle of the street and this was cast while they're screaming. They came literally and put that show on and this made it to the uh, networks. The networks. Yeah, that this is the protest against activities that are taking place, protests by Palestinian uh, teenagers who uh, suffering from the oppression that's taking place. They arranged that setting uh, in order to show this. It was not centered around any event. With, with this in mind, uh, with this kind of attitude in mind, what is a Christian response? How do we as evangelicals respond to the nation of Israel? They're not always perfect. They don't do everything no, right. right. So how do we respond? Well, I, I think that the first thing is to make very clear what I said at the onset. To take our position on behalf of Israel is not to become passive or inconsiderate in our concern for people who are in genuinely exploited, 
mistreated and in need, and Palestinians are. The irony of it is that isn't by the Israelis. It is that with uh, 40 years that they, you will constantly heard lamented that they have not been able to have their own place. That in those same uh, 40 to 60 years, excuse me, 60 years, in, in those same number of years, Israel came in having nothing and came under duress of battle to have to possess a land the United Nations said would belong to them and they were fought by the Arab world to take the boundaries that were given them at that time, which were infinitely less than earlier guaranteed by the League of Nations uh, back in the early 1920s. And uh, the, the constant squeezing of Israel coming out of being forced out of the, this possession is, is never reviewed historically when these issues are brought up. But wouldn't I, wouldn't I be correct in saying that if you're talking about a legitimate Palestinian state, that you would have to include territory in Jordan? Oh, absolutely, because originally... But there's no discussion about... No, the Jordanians, Jordan the Jordanians any... drove the Palestinians over across the Jordan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Israel had, in fact, warned them at the time of the, the uh, Six-Day War, when this, this area was being taken back, uh, which was originally given to them, uh, they, they dropped leaflets and said, you'll be safe, don't, don't, uh, don't leave, don't do anything. And they fled the area, went up into Lebanon, among other places that they fled, and then were driven back both out of Lebanon uh, except for Hezbollah forces that are there today, and back from Jordan. And Israel uh, was, had this return of people that by the time they came back, everything was in a slovenly condition that once had been a livable area, simply because it had been left empty for, uh, for Israel saying, we did not claim this, and when they left, we didn't drive them out. Mm -hmm. We tried to let them know they would be administrated fairly. Now. All these years since then, and that's between 50 and 60 years ago, all these years, the entire Arab world has come into mega monies, billions, I mean trillions, uh, petrodollars, and all that could have been done uh, just to help those people find uh, facility with life, capacity to uh, not live through the quote, quote, constant suffering they're facing, which is real. Nothing is done for them by the Arab world. And they, in fact, are used as a leverage by the Arab world because, and this brings us to the bottom line, there is no desire to ever have peace with Israel in the land. So the agenda is Israel out of the land. And that's announced uh, very, very clearly and documented by, in many environments. And, uh, well, it there's is. never been the willingness on the part of the Arab community no. and you or on the part of the Palestinians to, to, to uh, establish the right for Israel to exist. The Gaza example we just made a moment ago. They, they said, we'll, we'll give this for peace. So they give that and then they, within less than a year, they're being shelled from there. There is no will for there to be, to be peace on the part of those forces. I would not say that's true of everybody that's a Palestinian. Course, that is true of Hamas forces, Hezbollah forces. Oh, Hezbollah, it's yeah. driven by militant Islam, uh, Al Qaeda values, terrorist values, Iran, dominate it all. Yeah. Iran, uh, uh, Iran most of, is, of course, yeah. Uh, we have a break. Uh, when we come back, I want to continue the discussion and talk about one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about uh, your position on a state, a Palestinian state in the West Bank. Uh, there's no discussion about any of that West Bank state being a part of Jordan, which is part of the territory that really it should be. Mm -hmm. So what about a Palestinian state? What would that mean? We'll be right back. Stay tuned.